There will be sometimes when we're using calculus when finding the derivative really wasn't the goal of the problem. The goal was actually to use the derivative to get somewhere else. So it would be nice if we don't always have to do everything by hand if we could actually use our calculator. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find the derivative of a function at a certain point using your graphing calculator. On this first slide, I'm just going to write down the different steps that we're going to use on our calculator. And then in the next slide, we'll actually use our calculator to get those. So please write down the steps with me and then make sure that you're following along with your calculator as I do with them on my calculator as well. Okay, the first thing that we're going to be doing, we are going to plug our equation that we're trying to find the derivative of in into y into, sorry about that y1 equals, so we'll actually type that in there. Okay, the second thing that we're going to do after that, and if you have the new operating system, yours might work a little bit differently, so you might want to ask me about this, or I can try to find an example for you for that. So the next thing that we're going to do is when we actually want to um, find the derivative at a certain point, we are going to choose math 8. And when we choose math 8, what's going to come up on our calculator, it's going to say n derivative, and then I think it puts parentheses, so it doesn't put the parentheses there. It's going to say n derivative. So it's taking the derivative at a certain number. What we want to do is say, what do we want it to take the derivative of? So we actually are going to put y1 there. And if you recall, to get y1, we're going to go to vars, and then we'll pick y vars, and then we'll pick function, and then y1 is sitting there waiting for us. Okay, after we do that, we'll press comma. And then we need to say, what are we taking the derivative with respect to? Well, usually our independent variable is going to be x. So we'll put, yep, take the derivative with respect to x. And then we just need to say, where do we want it to find the derivative at? So we're going to actually put in, I'm just going to put a blank there. You're going to fill in the number where you want to take the derivative at. So if it's at... 4, you plug 4 in there, if it's at 8, wherever is what you're going to put in there. So that's basically the steps that you're going to do. And then of course if you press enter it should actually give you that. Okay, I know that most of you have the new operating system, so your calculator when you press the derivative button it is going to give you something that looks like this. And then it's going to have, it's going to have a little box right there. It's going to have something in parentheses, and then it's going to have x equals, and there's going to be another box, and I think there's even a box right here. So if your calculator looks like this, you are going to put an x in this spot because you're taking the derivative with respect to x. In here, you're going to put the y1, and in the video it does show you how to get to y1, and so that's not different on your calculator. And then if it says to find the derivative at x equals 3 or x equals 4 or whatever, that's what you'll put in that box. So the setup is just a little bit different, but most of the steps are going to be the same. So hopefully that helps you out as you're trying your problems. So let's go ahead and try some examples. You'll notice this one says to find f prime of x at that spot. We want to find it at the point 1, 125. One thing that we really don't care about on this one is it says um, at the point 1, 125. We really only care about the x value, so that's the only thing that I will be concerned about. So let's go ahead and grab out our calculators. Let's do 3x plus 2 raised to the third power. We need to get out of the screen before we press math 8, so let's do second quit. So now I'm going to hit math 8 and when I do that, notice it says n derivative, it's going to take the derivative. I would like to it to use the function that I have in y1. So I am going to hit vars, y vars, function, pick y1, okay, comma, what do I want it to take respect with respect to x? And then comma, where do I want to take it? take the derivative at. In this specific example, it was at x equals 1. So I'll type a 1 in there, close my parentheses, and press enter. And you'll notice my derivative is 225. So since it went out three places was 0 0.000, we can just put 225 for our answer. So if we go back to my notes, the derivative, and I'm going to write it like this, the derivative at 1, so that lets me know that I know that you're finding the derivative of the function at 1, we know that it's equal to 225. On this example, there'd be no work necessary other than me just writing I'm taking the derivative at 1, and I get 225 for my answer. 
So now let's go ahead and try the next one. We have f of x equals 4 cosine x minus 3, and it's at the point 0, 1. So again, notice again, I do not care about the y value. I'm only concerned about that x value. So we're going to be finding it at x equals 0. So let's once again go to our calculators. Okay, we're going to type in y equals 4 cosine x minus 3. But before we do that, I'm going to check my mode just to make sure that I'm in radians. And I am, so I should be good to go with that. So that's good. Now let's go to y equals. I'm going to type in 4 cosine x minus 3, which I did. So we are set to go on that. And now I would like to find the derivative at x equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and quit. I'm going to hit math. 8 because that will calculate the derivative for me. I now am going to say which function. It's the y1 function. So vars, y vars function, y1, and then comma x. I'm taking it with respect to x. Do I never do I ever on my calculator want to do it without respect to x? No. So we'll always use x for our calculators. And then comma, where do I want it to take the derivative at? This one was at x equals 0. So I'll go ahead and put in 0. And then we do that, and then we should just be able to press enter, and notice I get a derivative of 0. So if I go back to my PowerPoint, we will notice that f prime, f prime of 0 is equal to 0. So hopefully now you can use your calculator to find the derivative of a function.